This time it's already on. Tech support is <laughs> way ahead of us. They said you may fool tech support once, but not yeah. twice. Welcome. Good Thank morning. you. Good morning. Good morning. Well, it's great that we all can come together this morning because it was such an intimate day yesterday. It's always best when the, the nut cracks open, it's easier to get to uh, what's inside. And so, however long it takes to crack the nut open, doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> it's precious to get to what's in our hearts. Yeah. So we all felt strongly to come today to be here with all of you. <laughs> and just to open it up um, to your experiences and and the calling of your heart. Nothing more precious than using time in this way. To bring yourself into that peace and stillness. Life was never meant to be dramatic. <laughs> At first it's hard to believe that, but it actually in the end it's the truth. <laughs> yeah. And all of us are in the process of taking steps that are coming to us internally. I think we could end up, we could be a reality TV show. <laughs> if people knew the, the comments and the things that we share, they would have such a good laugh. <laughs> Walking over this morning, Jenny said to Jason, your wife was so helpful to me last night. <laughs> and then Helena burst into laughter. <laughs> it doesn't take a joke or anything, it's just... <laughs> just the word wife sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, remember to laugh. <laughs> So yes, we would love to open it up if anybody has anything they want to share or, or ask about. This laugh and this cheerfulness is very. Um, um, I like it very much mm. <laughs> because it like opens mm. everything. It's like. Mm. Um, yeah, it's not like. Um, this cheerfulness opens up to hear your inner voice, actually. Mm -hmm. And I, enjoy to be cheerful. Yeah. Um, I would like also to tell them um, about yesterday, I think, something. Uh, actually, 
yesterday because the, um, the guy he always went to the past and made corrections and then another correction and another. So. Eli eile ta elokuvas nii ta kaveri, joka meni aina menneisyyteen ja korjasi asioita siellä ja sitten korjasi uudelleen. Um, actually, on this retreat, I was also through all these happenings and meet, um, and thoughts coming up and um, talks and everything. There came, came a lot of old memories in my mind. And very concrete. It was not like a. It was very, and I saw the whole picture from in front of me. Yeah, it could be days, it could be whole, I don't know, month or all these feet. Very concrete, like he saw. But, um, and then I noticed I don't have to make any corrections actually. I just saw them, saw them, and even if I went in these. My films, I, I had pain or something. But then it is just all these left. It, it, it was just a film. And I just looked at the film and, and somehow I was uh, happy to, to have this film. Katsoin sitä, niin kaikki tästä jäi, että se oli pelkkää elokuvaa, ja nyt jollakin tavalla olin onnellinen siitä, että minulla oli tämä elokuva. And even sometimes I could make new um, experience here. Ja joskus sain tehty jopa uuden kokemuksen täällä. Nyt. And it was, I was free to, to enjoy. Ja olin nyt vapaa nauttimaan. Yeah, I'm glad you're sharing that because it's that's really getting to the essence of forgiveness. In the Course in Miracles, Jesus says forgiveness forgiveness is quiet. And and does nothing. It just looks and waits and watches and judges not. So when you come to the point of, of trying to practice A Course in Miracles, in the truest and deepest way, you are going beyond the concept of of levels. <coughs> evolution. Evolution. And beyond the new age uh, teachings of you create your own reality. Because the Course in Miracles is not teaching that you create your own reality. It's teaching that God created reality. And the most you can do is accept reality exactly as it already is. So, what seemed to be a step in the right direction was the ability to manifest and uh, use the power of thought. Askel oikeaan suuntaan on se, että kyky on, että voi käyttää ajatuksen voimaa. To make good memories instead of bad memories. Että saa hyviä muistoja huonojen muistojen sijasta. To make better memories. Saadakseen parempia muistoja. But now we're starting to see that all of the memories are a block ja to nyt, the awareness of God. Nyt alamme huomata, että kaikki muistot oikeastaan ovat esteenä Jumalan muistamisen tiellä. The good ones and the bad ones. Hyvät ja pahat. Uh, many people believe that they have come to earth, that the world is their oyster, and basically they're to try to use what's 
there to make the best memories possible. Ja päättelevät, että he ovat tulleet tänne käyttääkseen sitä, mitä täällä on, saadakseen mahdollisimman hyviä muistoja ja kokemuksia. And the good memories are seen as needing to offset the terrible bad memories. Ja ne halutaan nää, niin kuin nää hyvät muistot näiden pahojen tilalle. But uh, this will never work. Mutta tämä ei koskaan oikeastaan toimi. Uh, in the old days they used to take photographs and wait for the pictures to be developed. Ennen aikaa kun otettiin valokuvia, niin odoteltiin, että kuva kehittyy. And be happy if the pictures turned out good. Ja oltiin onnellisia, jos kuvista tuli hyviä. And angry and upset if they wasted their money on uh, pictures that weren't even there. Ja sitten oltiin suutti, jos kuvat ei onnistunutkaan ja niitä ei edes tullutkaan. Nowadays with the digital phones and cameras people take lots of pictures. Ja nyt kun nämä digitaaliset kamerat ja puhelimet niin otetaan paljon kuvia. They have photo overload. Ja kuvista on aika yli tarjontaa. <laughs> and they have to keep uh, deleting and letting go of some really good pictures because there's no more room for ja the pitää, pictures. Ja pitää välillä jopa joitakin oikein hyviä kuviakin poistaa, koska ei ole enää tilaa uusille kuville. But for lasting peace, we have to be able to stop trying to make good memories. Ja saadaksemme tämän pysyvän rauhan, niin meidän pitää lopettaa yrittää hyvien muistojen tekemään. And many people may say, well, well, okay, what's the point ja, of m- life if I can't even make good memories anymore? <laughs> sitten joku voi kysyä, että no, mikä se on sitten elämän tarkoitus tässä, jos mä en edes voi tehdä itselleni hyviä muistoja? Uh, we have a little uh, teaching movie we we have called Time's End. Ja meillä on tämmöinen uh, hyvä lyhyt elokuva opetustarkoituksen, joka nimi on Ajan loppu. And the main character is tormented by his wife's death. Ja päähahmo tätä päähankaria, niin sitä kiusaa tämä ajatus kiduttaa se vaimon kuolemasta. He just can't get over the grief. Hän ei pääse yli tästä surusta. And really, he can't get over the thought that those good memories are gone forever. Ja hän ei pääse siitä yli, että nämä hyvät muistot ovat poistuneet ikuisiksi ajoiksi. He's turned very dark and pessimistic. Hänestä on tullut hyvin synkkämielinen ja pessimistinen. But his healing only comes when he sees that the good memories and the bad memories are the same. Ja hänen parantumisensa oikeastaan tapahtuu vasta, kun hän huomaa, että Nämä hyvät ja pahat muistot ovat samaa. On the surface that can seem absolutely ridiculous. Näin pinnalta katsottuna se voi näyttää aivan naurettavalta. But good memories are positive judgments and bad memories are negative judgments. Mutta hyvät muistot ovat hyviä tuomioita ja huonot muistot taas näitä ikäviä tuomioita, huonoja tuomioita. And the positive and the negative are all part of the same continuum of judgment. Ja sekä nämä positiiviset että negatiiviset tuomiot ovat samaa, osa samaa jatkumaa tässä tuomitsemisessa. If you ask a person on the street, uh, which one is better, a compliment or a criticism? Niin, jos kysytään kadun mieltä, että kumpi on parempi, että onko se kehu vai kritiikki? Most people will say, well I'm sane and rational and I will tell you, a compliment is better than a criticism. No, suurin osa sanoo, että no, mä olen tämmöinen rationaalinen ja terveenjälkinen ihminen, niin totta kai se kehu on parempi kuin se kritiikki. But actually they are the same. Mutta oikeastaan nämä ovat aivan sama asia. And when you are able to see them as the same, you will be free of guilt forever. Ja silloin kun kykenet katsomaan näitä asioita aivan samana, niin silloin olet vapaa syyllisyydestä ikuisiksi ajoiksi. Compliments that are aimed at form are part of the self-concept that the ego made. <köhön> ja nämä kehut, jotka on tehty muodossa, niin ne on osa tätä egon uh, ajatusta itsestään, joka kuuluu elämään. And if you want to prove of that, you can, some of you remember the Bible. Ja jos olet tästä todistajat jotkut, teistä muistaa raamatusta. The Gospels. Uh, nämä tota, siis evankeliumit. Uh, when I would read the Bible, they gave me a Bible where the words of Jesus were in red letters. 
Mulla oli raamattu, siinä oli Jeesuksen sanat punaisilla kirjaimilla. Everything else was black, but Jesus' words coming out were always in red. Niin, tässä oli siis, mikä mulla oli, niin siinä kaikki muut kirjaimet oli mustia, mutta Jeesuksen sanat oli aina painettu punaisin kirjaimin. And I didn't particularly like to read ever, so I just read the red words. Mä en oikeastaan tykännyt lukemisesta, niin mä luin aina yleensä punaiset sanat. I said, this is a big book. It seems like the, the end of the book is the most interesting, and the red words are the most interesting. So I niin. just read the red words. Niin, tämä on paksu kirja, ja näyttää loppuun, se on yleensä aina se paras, ja sitten tässäkin varmaan mielenkiintoisen kohtaan nämä punaiset kirjaa, mutta me luemme vain ne. And I would notice, when I would read the red words, I would, I would notice that there was this presence behind the words that was so loving and so transcendent. Mm, siis, uh, tää... Kun mä luin näitä punaisia sanoja siitä, niin huomasin, että niiden takaa luosti semmoinen läsnäolo, joka oli niin voimakas ja niin kaiken kattava. And so basically you have the apostles and Jesus living together and you get to hear about his teachings and, and their life together. Eli oikeastaan siinä on nämä apostolit ja Jeesus, jotka elää yhdessä ja sitten saat kuulla tästä elämästä ja näistä Jeesuksen opetuksista. But the red words were never typical human dialogue. Mutta ne punaiset sanat ei koskaan ollut tyypillistä ihmisten puhetta. Jesus was like, James, uh, how do you like the fish? Jesus oli sille, että hei, Jussi, mitä sä tykkäsit tästä kalasta? Oh, Peter, I like that hairstyle. Niin, hän tykkään liuksista vielä. Mary, where did you get that, uh, that bracelet? <laughs> the red words had none of the chatter of human interpersonal talk. Instead it was before Abraham was, I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Minä olen tie, totuus ja elämä. I am the resurrection and the life. Minä olen pelastus ja elämä. Ylösnousemus. It was like eternity speaking. Se oli ikuisuus, joka puhui. So I began to watch the red words and I thought, Jesus never compliments the apostles once. Yeah. All of the New Testament, he doesn't give one single compliment. James, I like that robe. Oh, I love that color. That color is good on you. No, not one single compliment of the form. But also not one single criticism of the form. If he made any commentary, he was talking about their soul. How to free their soul from these crazy beliefs. And even when he talked about the scribes and the Pharisees, ja silloin myöskin näistä fariseuksista ja muista, kun puhuttiin. He was giving us a teaching on the ego. Hän antoi egon opetusta, egolle opetusta. And saying, don't waste your time to go in that direction. It yeah, will profit you nothing. Ja sanoi, sanoi heille, että älkää tulko aikaanne näihin opetuksiin, koska siinä ei mitään. He wasn't criticizing the, the people. Ei hän ihmisiä kritisoi. He was saying, join me. In everlasting life. So I had other people that would read the red words sometime too, and they'd say, "This one I don't like." When he said to the the young man, uh, uh, "Follow me," and the man said, I, I, yeah, "That's good, but I can't right now. I have to go." Bury my father in the next town. Yeah, and the boy 
And Jesus just said, let the dead bury the dead. Hän sanoi, että antaa kuolleiden hortaa kuolla. So people would say, I don't like those red words. Ja ihmiset sanoivat, minä en pidä noista punaisista sanoista. They said, why shouldn't he be a little more kind with this man? His father's just died and he wants to go bury his father. No, sehän ihmiset alkoivat ajatella, että miksi, että olisi ystävällisen, hän ei ollut ystävällisempi tätä kaveria kohtaan, koska hänen isänsä juuri kuoli, niin miksi hän ei saisi mennyt hautaamaan isänsä? It only may take a few days or a week for the funeral and everything, and then he can come back and follow you. I said, no, these are not harsh words at all. This is coming from eternity. It's saying, come return to eternity right now. Nyt. Join me now in everlasting life. We don't have a week to wait. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. And even though he didn't say it, I could feel it that it is eternity speaking to you now. Give up this crazy belief in death. Because uh, it's holding you back from eternal life. Koska se pidättelee sinua ikuisesta elämästä. And we don't even have an instant to waste. Meillä ei ole hetkeäkään hukattavaa. I am calling you out of the world. Minä kutsun sinua pois maailmasta. If you hear my message, leave everything behind. Jos kuulet viestini, jätä kaikki taaksesi. Hold on to nothing. Älä pidä mistään kiinni. Don't even look around your house and see if you want to grab a, a memory or a cherished object. Just come right out of the door right now. Yeah. So for me, behind the red words was not only eternity. But there was a sense of immediacy. I would even say urgency. Like you don't have to waste another moment. Feeling stuck in this world. So in A Course in Miracles, Jesus says, you may wonder how you'll ever find yourself in this world. Todetaan, että sinä saatat ihmiset, että kuinka ikinä havainnutkaan olevasi nyt tässä maailmassa. And he says, if you have this thought, ja hän sanoo, että jos sinulla on tämä ajatus, just ask yourself one question. Kysy vain itseltäsi yksi asia. Who is the I that's living in this world? Kuka on se minä, joka on tässä maailmassa? You can never find yourself in a dream. Sinä et koskaan voi löytää itseäsi unesta. Because the ego made the dream. Koska ego teki unen. And you're not the ego. Ja sinä et ole ego. The ego is a creature of time. It believes in time and space. Ego on ajan luomus ja olento. Se kuuluu aikaan ja tilaan. And every identity of this world is rooted in time. Ja jokainen identiteetti, joka on ne täällä tässä unessa, niin kuuluu maailmaan. So there have been times where people ask me, uh, well, what about you? Ja on ollut aika, joille ihmiset kysyvät minulta, että mitä sinä? You're still here in the world. Sinä olet yhä tässä maailmassa. And I say, am I? Kysyn, että olenko? I don't feel that way. En koe niin. I don't feel located. En koe olevan missään sijainnissa. Uh, when I went to Argentina, they asked me about my president. Niin, kun menin Argentiinaan, he kysyvät, että mistä tulet. Because there were bombs dropping and there were they were very angry. But I told them, I, I have no president. Yeah, I have no president, I have no country. And in a few minutes we all were singing John Lennon's song, uh, Imagine. Even in Argentina, they all knew the words in English. Imagine there's no country. 
ajattele, että ei ole maata. I wonder if you can. Ajattele, että onko, pystytkö? Yeah, we were singing, we were happy. Laulamme, olemme onnellisia. That was the last question about countries or politics. Se oli viimeinen kysymys maista tai politiikasta. We had too many important things to discuss. <laughs> Even though there were riots out in the street. One time I went to a city uh, in Iowa, in the United States. And the Mississippi River had gone over its banks. It took the uh, three quarters of the, the town was underwater, the buildings. And as I was flying in, I saw this mass of water. I was flying into a massive flood area. But the people picked me up at the airport. They took me to a dry building. <laughs> but we all were dry. Yeah, sorry. We were all dry. Yeah, all in the kuivia. And I did a like a three day uh, retreat. Yeah, pidin kolme päivää retreatin. For three days, I said, "Ask me anything." Yeah, kolme päivän ajan sanoin heille, että kysykää ihan mitä tahansa. We talked about sickness, Puhun death, sairaudesta, kuolemasta puhuin. Separation, e- erillisyydestä. Relationships, ihmissuhteista. Perception, ja näkemyksestä. Guilt. Shame. But in three days, no one asked me about the water. <laughs> they weren't. Con- they knew the water floods will recede and eventually it will dry up. And we're not going to waste one minute with David talking about water. That's the kind of urgency that you have to cultivate in your heart. Because you're worth it. Because this is about escaping from time and experiencing the present moment. Jesus says in the course, uh, can you imagine what it's like? To be calm and quiet all the time. But that is what time is for. To learn just that and nothing more. You don't have to learn a damn thing about this world. Analysis will get you nowhere. And even processes of this synthesis are still implying that there's some process that must occur. Sorry, can you repeat? Even with the idea of synthesis, like integrating, mm-hmm. it still implies that there is a process that must occur. But this presence is prior to all processes. It's, it's much more accurate to say, just drop it or stop it. Put your willingness and your desire to just cease to participate in the thoughts of time. And surely you have some of the same questions that I had. Because the Course in Miracles came into my life when I was in my twenties. A time when you're supposed to be building a career, having a family. Carving out your position in this world. Adapting and adjusting to time. Becoming a well-adjusted human being. Jesus doesn't want a well-adjusted human being. 
What good will that do in eternity? Mitä hyötyä siitä on ikuisuudessa? How practical is that? Kuinka käytännöllistä on So this is a presence that's calling you to leave the past behind. Like you all did in that angel bath yesterday. That was probably the most surprising thing, the lack of resistance to love. To say, oh my God, this feels great and I didn't do anything for it. You might have had a moment of hesitation, but you stepped right through that. You felt how easy love is. How natural love is. How you don't have to prop it up or do something to make it be what it is. You said, I, I received, I allowed myself to receive the love. <laughs> that little bit of allowance produced so much. So, that's really what you have with the opportunity with uh, with all of us here. We've all had the same kind of past. We had schooling, we had conditioning. Uh, we went through relationships. That's why we, Helena laughs when she hears the word wife or husband. Because it's just a concept. It can be a serious concept or a very funny concept. Depending on your state of mind. But this is the opportunity to start to look honestly at what concepts am I still holding on to. It was beautiful, you came six or seven hundred kilometers and shared with us that you're just going through a divorce right now, a very intense time. And that was so transparent to just step right in in the middle of the retreat and say, here's what's going on in yeah, my mind. Because underneath that is, I want peace in my heart and I'm worth it. I want to experience a love that will never end. Minä haluan kokea sen rakkauden, joka ei ikinä lopu. What state of mind could look upon a, a marriage or a divorce with the same presence? Mikä mielentila voisi katsoa uh, avioliittoa ja avioeroa samalla uh, läsnäololla, samalla kokemuksella? You weren't here, but uh, Helen had described how she and her husband bought a divorce cake. Ja sinä et ollut täällä silloin, mutta... Helen kertoi, että hän ja hänen aviomiehensä ostivat avioerokaku. And they joined hands. Pitivät toisiaan käsistä kiinni. To take the knife together and have a piece of cake. Ja cake. ottivat toisiaan käsistä kiinni ja leikkasivat sen yhdessä ja ottivat viipaleet kakkua. And they filled out the divorce form on the internet and pushed the send button together. Ja he täyttivät tämän avioerolomakkeen yhdessä internetissä ja pistivät sormet päällekkäin ja painoivat enteriä yhdessä ja lähettivät sen lomakkeen. It was seen as very surreal, because in marriages, people, oftentimes the bride and groom will take the knife together and cut the cake together. And the whole marriage ceremony is everybody's joining together, and witnesses and so forth, and it's so let's do this together. Let's go on this journey together. But how wonderful we're seeing now that marriage is not a beginning and divorce is not an ending. Yeah, 
Birth is not a beginning and death is not an ending. There is an underlying continuity of the I am presence that is always with us. Closer than breathing. Because it is our very self. And that is the only point that is worth dealing with in the dream, is waking up from the dream. It's the only point worth uh, any effort in this dream. So if somebody listens to you and they go, what is the point? You say, to wake up. <laughs> the only question that is valuable to ask yourself is what is the purpose? Even with marriage, the only question that is valuable is what is it for? And at every point you should be able to ask yourself, is this taking me in the direction of healing and awakening? Jesus is not big on form. He's not interested in the form of the marriage. He's interested in the content. Is it an experience of love and union? Or is this holding me back? Am I playing out some past belief? Day after day. Feeling I'm stuck and I can't change. And it takes great self-honesty. All of us have had to ask that with our relationships, with our community. Why would you even stay unless you had a purpose for it? And the purpose is forgiveness. Seeing the false is false. Imagine new wedding vows. Do you take this woman to see the false is false? And you take this man to see the false is false? Until you transcend all of human perception. And wake up to eternal life. The question wouldn't be, do you love him or her? Not even if you will love them in the future. That's a trick too. Because love is not in the future. Can you commit and be honest and say, I love you now? There's a part in the course, a section called the immediacy of salvation. <coughs> Where Jesus said, future loss is not your fear. He says your real dread is present joining. And you could you could observe this perhaps with the angel bath. The love is so deep and so involuntary. And just observe that part of your mind that goes, this is dangerous. The ego is afraid of being gone. 
Egoa pelottaa se, että se häviää. Like if you give yourself over to this love, there will be no more ego. Jos sinä an, ja annat itse tälle rakkaudelle, niin ego häviää. All defenses, all protections will have to drop in Kaik- the presence of love. Kaikkien puolustusmekanismien pitää pudota rakkauden läsnäolo. So we're really here to to encourage you to take whatever steps are on your heart. Ja me olemme täällä rohkaisemassa teitä ottamaan mitä ikinä askelia, jotka ovat teidän sydämellä. And part of that is the Spirit just gives examples from our lives of how we've drop, let things drop and fall away. Ja osa siitä, että me annamme esimerkkejä oman elämämme kohdalta, että miten olemme antaneet näiden asioiden vaan pudota pois. And we're grateful. Ja olemme siitä kiitollisia. We're not filled with regrets. Me emme ole täällä katumusta. Filled with uh, all kinds of concerns of the future. Ja emmekään kanna mitään näitä huolia huomisesta. It's a very content and simple life. On hyvin tyytyväinen ja yksinkertainen elämä meillä. And of course it's available to all of us, because that's what the red words are about. <laughs> ja se kurssi sanoo, että tämmöinen on mahdollista kaikille. Siitähän ne punaiset sanat oikeastaan kertovat. Yeah. This is the last thing that I felt I wanted to do. <laughs> And this is exactly why I'm doing it. Ego tells me that do not open your mouth so that you will not reveal how stupid you are. Now it's, uh, it's a realize that it's, it seems so difficult to open my stuff here now when there's so many of you and it looks like a jury. <laughs> it's much easier to speak to Aira in a like, private in a small group. <laughs> We all know, yes. Emme tiedä mitä mitä mä mitä mä haluan sanoa, mutta ehkä tästä tuoreimmasta päästä, tästä kun puhutaan tästä enkeli enkeli polusta. trying to say, but maybe it's about this angel path. That's so we talk about these angels. Ainakin uh, tästä. At least uh, about that angel path. Yes. Kun kerrottiin mitä se mitä se tarkoittaa, niin se ei ollut yhtään niin kuin se ei tuntunut vaikealta minusta. When I was told what it means, it didn't feel difficult. Ja mun oli hyvin helppo. Koskettaa muita. Uh, it was very easy for me to touch others. Mutta siinä oli tiet, mä voin koskettaa niinku eri osiin päätä, esimerkiksi. Uh, oh, I can touch the people to different parts of their head, for example. Ja, ja sitten mä kosketin ihmisiä äh, niillä tavoilla, jotka tiedän, että minusta on tuntunut hyvältä. And I touched them in a way that I knew that felt good for me. 
jotka on tuntunut, min, kun esimerkiksi minä ja mun mies kosketellaan toista. Mä olin melkein viimeinen, joka kulki sen enkelipolun, että mä en tiennyt, miltä se siinä tuntuu. I was one of the last ones who went through the angel bath, so I had no idea how it feels inside of it. Mutta tosiaan mä huomasin, että se oli, joo, sitten mä huomasin, että mulla oli rajoja tietyllä tavalla. Then I realized I had limitations. Että mä en esimerkiksi uskaltanut puhua, en mä voinut kuiskata kenellekään mitään tai sanoa mitään, se oli... And I realized that I couldn't uh, whisper or say anything to anybody. That was too scary. <coughs> no, sitten kun mä itse lähdin sitä polkua when I, when I started, so it's my turn to start walking mm-hmm. the path. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mä tunsin itseni aika epävarmaksi siinä ja... I felt... Insecure. Ja mietin sitä, että kuinka nopeasti mun pitäisi kävellä ja, ja tuota, osaanko mä nyt niin kuin pysähtyä. Ja... And I was thinking that how fast am I supposed to walk or do I know how when to stop and so on. Sitten mä myöskin, varsinkin siinä alussa, mä huomasin, että mä olin jotenkin ää, In the beginning I uh, realized that I was somehow Jotenkin pettynyt Somehow disappointed Et se ei tuntunut niin hyvältä, kuin mä olin niin kuin olettanut It didn't feel as good as I had uh, wished and assumed ja mä jotenkin mittasin niitä kosketuksia, että mi- mitä ne oli. And I was kind of measuring of all the touches and what they were. Mm. No sitten ehkä siihen jotenkin, en tiedä mitä tapahtui, mutta sitten kun meni kauemmaksi, niin mä aloin niin kuin, olin enemmän ehkä niin kuin relaxed, ra- niin kuin, mm. I didn't know what happened, but when I kept on, went a little bit further, then I became more relaxed. Ja sitten kun Janne kun puhui, että sinä olet rakkaus ja... ja... When Janne spoke that you are love. Ja niin edespäin, niin mä huomasin, että se tuntui tosi hyvältä. And so on, and then I felt that those words felt really, really good. Mm. Ja, mulla oli jotenkin sellainen... Äh, jälkeenpäin sellainen arvostelu itselle tai tuomio itselle siitä, että mä en osannut sitä Later on, afterwards, I was somehow giving judgment to myself that I didn't know how to No erityisesti siitä, että mä jotenkin niin kuin arvioin sitä, että että miten ihmiset koskettaa minua ja miten ne kosketti muita. Että tämmöinen niin ekon vertailu oh, tuli oh, siihen mukaan. Just, just like I had this analysis and comparison that how did these people touch me and how did they touch others who passed. Ja myöskin se, että kuinka joku osasi. Esimerkiksi kun Mirka oli niin, hän oli niin jotenkin autuaalisen onnellinen siinä, kun hän kulki ja... Yeah, ja tuota, uh, for example, how Mirka was looking so joyous and happy when she was passing through the angel bar. No, I'm not 
miettinyt jälkeenpäin, mutta se tuli nyt taas aamulla, kun tästä puhuttiin. Ja sitten mä muistan samalla tässä, kun aamulla aamiaispöydässä. Siinä oli keskustelu, jossa oli mukana Aira ja Antti. Ja and when we had this uh, discussion, there was Aira and uh, me, Antti. Yeah. Ja sitten se, että on, että on ihan okei, okay, että näitä kaikkia tunteita saa nousta, mutta tärkeintä on vaan se, että, että mä en syyllistä itseäni siitä. Yeah, we are talking about that it's okay that all these emotions rise, but the important thing is that I don't uh, bring guilt to that emotion that rises. No. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That was stupidness number XX. Compare it to number XX. Yeah, but... Oh, it's on the web. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There was one event um, um, that came into my mind yesterday when David was, you know, <laughs> David Bowie. <laughs> yeah, that was really what came to my mind when you were speaking uh, yesterday. Kun sä kerroit siitä, miten Jeesus on mukana kaikessa, mitä meille tapahtuu. When you were speaking all that, that Jesus is with us when whatever happens to us in our life. Ja mä oon keskustellut tästä jo jonkun muunkin kanssa ja mulla on jostain syystä niin... No tää on niinku... Mä kerron semmosen esimerkin, jossa mä, josta mä mietin tätä. I had this discussion earlier on with other people and I'm not going to share an example. Mm -hmm. Mä olin lähdössä tässä kesäkuun lopussa Nitsaan. I was on my, in the end of uh, June, I was this year, I was going to Nice, Nice, in Paris, in France, yeah. For one week. Ja mä asun Seinäjoella, Keski-Suomessa. And I live in Seinäjoki, which is in the middle of Finland. Ja me, menin sitten Helsinkiin junalla ja sain yösiän mun poikani ja hänen vaimonsa asunnossa. I uh, went to Helsinki uh, with a train and then I got out to stay overnight over my sons and her, his wives. Ja he eivät olleet kotona, mä olin saanut heiltä avaimen, jolla pääsin sinne. They were sisään. not there, so I was given a key so I could go and sleep, spend the night at their apartment. Ja mä nukuin siellä yön ja sitten aamulla siinä keräsin tavarat ja, ja huomasin, että siellä oli vaaka. Uh, I, I spent the night there and, I, and uh, in the morning when I was gathering my uh, things I noticed that there was a scale there. Ja sitten mä, kun mä olin Baltikörin lento, jossa ei saa olla kuin kahdeksan kiloa matkatavaraa, niin mä pysin punnitsemaan, että onko mulla liian painava laukku. And then the, I had a Baltic Air flight where you can only have eight kilos. So then I started weighing my things. Do I have like, too much weight? Yeah. Mä vein sen matkalaukun sinne heidän makuuhuoneeseen ja, ja näin. So I took my luggage to, the, uh, to their uh, bedroom where the scale was and then started weighing. Ja sitten siinä oli kaikki ja mä tein, sinne oli tulossa joku heidän ystävänsä mun jälkeen ja mä yritin laittaa kaikki sitten nätisti siellä, että on... And, and some of the, one of the friends was coming to stay at the apartment after me, so I started uh, cleaning up and putting everything to their place before leaving. No, sitten mä oli sovittu, että me jätän avaimen sinne sisään, kun and, lähden. And then we had uh, agreed that I will leave the key inside when I go. No, sitten mä laitan repun selkään, käsilaukun tähän. Then I uh, put my backpack to my back and I my handbag here. Ja sitten mä menen ulos ja mä laitan oven tukkoon ja lähden kävelemään alas. Uh, and then I uh, go outside, close the door and start walking downstairs. 
Ja kun mä kävelin muutaman askeleen, niin mä huon, että helvetti, missä mun matkalaukku on? And then I realized on the door, and my luggage is inside the apartment. Että huh huh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> ja joo, mulla ei ollut kovin paljon ylimääräistä aikaa tuota, sit ehtiä sinne lennolle ja laukku oli lukkojen takana. So, uh, I had my luggage behind locked doors and, and I didn't really have much extra time because I had to catch the flight. Joo, no. Sitten kauhean hätä tuli tietenkin ja sitten mä muistin tai tiesin, että heidän vuokra, mun pojan vuokra isäntä asuu siinä naapurissa. No, direct really the worry came to mind that then I got the knowledge that their landlord is living next door. Kello oli 15 eli 7 aamulla. It was a quarter past seven in the morning. In June, kesäkuussa. Ei, kesäkuussa. Ja tuota, no ei sitten mitään, mä soitin ovi kelloa. No, when I went then I rang the doorbell. Kukaan ei tullut. No one came. Toitin toisen kerran, I ei, time. ei no. tullut. Sitten mä rynkytin. Then I started beating the door. No, no ei kun soitin kelloa. <laughs> yeah, no, that's the, that's the, okay, the doorbell would be, yeah. Sitten vuokra-isäntä tulee pyjamassa. And he comes in a, in a robe. Ja no, mä kerroin mitä on tapahtunut ja kysyin onko hänellä, kun mun, mä olin aikaisemmin kuullut mun pojalta, että että, että heidän vuokraisännällään on tietenkin sinne avain. Uh, so I told what happened and, uh, and that my son had told me that you have the key to this apartment. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No sitten vuokraisäntä sanoikin, että, että hän on antanut sen avaimen mun pojalle niin kuin annettavaksi hänen äidilleen. So, mulla oli se vuokraisännän avain. So he told me that he had given the extra key to, he, the, to her son to be given to his mother to her, so she actually had the key. <laughs> so the landlord did not have a key. No, sitten yeah, sitten sano, että no siellä on tota alakerran ilmoitustaululla on huoltoyhtiön puhelinnumero, että mene sinne ja soita äkkiä apua. Okay, but he said that downstairs there's a message board where you have uh, maintenance companies and uh, made the, his number, so just go and call there and then someone will come and open the door. No joo, minä soitin ja siellä oli ystävällinen mies ja kerroin mitä oli tapahtunut ja hän tuli kymmenessä minuutissa polkupyörällä sitten ja mulla avasi ove. So I, I uh, called and there was a kind man who answered and he came in ten minutes without bike the bicycle and, and came and opened the door for me. Ja minä ehdin oikein hyvin lentokäyntä. And I did catch and catch the flight and get to the airport. Mm. Mutta mulla oli valtava syyllisyys sen jälkeen siitä, mitä mä olin tehnyt, että, ja mietin, että no joo. I had a great amount of guilt afterwards about what I had done. Että mä olin häirinnyt sitä vuokraisännän aamurauhaa. I was bothering the landlord's morning privacy and peace. Ja mä ajattelin, että sitten niin kuin, että mun poika ja hänen vaimonsa, että nyt jotenkin sitten Vuokraisäntä on heille siitä vihainen, että tällaisia kaikkia äitejä kulkee täällä. I was, I was thinking that the landlord is so very angry to my son and his wife about that all these kinds of mothers walking around here and doing these kind of things in the morning and so on and so on. No joo, sitten kun menin siinä lentokoneeseen, ja siinä kun mä kävelin lentokoneeseen, and as I was walking to the airplane, mä soitin siinä Katjalle. I called Katja. Ystävälleni. Who's my friend of mine. Ja kerroin sitten tätä ja pääsin sitten siitä. And I was telling the story and so I was just relieved. No, helpotti. It felt made me feel better. Mutta miksi mä kerron tämän pitkän tarinan? But why I am telling this story? That long story. Uh, on se, että kun sanoit, että Jeesus on mukana kaikessa. You said that Jesus is with us in everything. Niin. Ja sitten... Niin. Uh, niin uh, onko hän mukana siinäkin, että minä jätän sen sinne sen laukun sisälle ja saan yes. nämä kokemukset, mitä sen so jälkeen tapahtuu? The tapa. question is that is he with me also at that moment when I forget the bag in the luggage inside and, and I get this experience? 
Yes, this is what we talked about, about the practicality of the miracles. It will take a lot of miracles to convince you of this presence that is already in there. We are told there are many answers you have received but have not heard. So when this apparent separation from God or fall from grace seemed to occur, the whole pathway back to God was given in one instant. Matka ja tie takaisin Jumalan luova annettiin samassa hetkessä. Vaikka näyttäisi, että se vie miljoonia vuosia ajassa, että se saadaan näytettyä. So, uh, we all have had experiences like you are describing, because that's very common for human beings. Meillä kaikilla on samankaltaisia kokemuksia, koska se on hyvin tyypillistä tässä ihmisalossa. Uh, being locked out of, of a, a house or a car, or um, having obstacles seemingly come in front of you as you're going towards your direction. Mm. Uh, needing a key or needing a specific information. We have to come into the habit of, of prayer and receptivity. Because the answer is always available. But of course the ego doesn't want you to hear the answer. It doesn't want you to hear the guidance of the Holy Spirit in Jesus. Its purpose is to maintain a sense of isolation and, and separateness. And so as you practice it takes willingness over and over to stop and pause Silloin kun harjoittelee, se vaatii halukkuutta uudelleen ja uudelleen, että pysäyttää ja ottaa se aika. And remember that this whole point of everything is this inner listening. Ja muista, että kaiken tämän koko, kaikkien asioiden tarkoitus on tämä sisäinen kuunteleminen. And for me, those miracles that I've experienced are so convincing when the answer is just allowed to be received. Ja minulle, kun ne kaikki ihmeet, mitä olen saanut ottaa vastaan, niin ne on niin vakuuttavaa silloin, kun on vain ollut valmis ottamaan sen vastaan. Because the ego always speaks first and the ego is very um, guarded and closed. Ja ego puhuu aina ensiksi ja ego on hyvin vartioitu ja hyvin sulkeutunut. What Jesus is really offering us is, is an entire different perspective on the whole cosmos. Ja mitä Jeesus tarjoaa oikeastaan on aivan toisenlaisen näkökulman koko tähän kosmokseen. Really everything of the cosmos is contained in one instant. Ja eli koko kosmos on sisältyy tähän yhteen pieneen hetkeen. But when it's split up into separate people, separate events, separate times, it seems to be very long. Eli silloin kun se jaetaan näin eri ihmisiin ja eri aikaan, eri paikkoihin, niin se vaikuttaa olla hyvin, hyvin pitkä. One time uh, the scribe of A Course in Miracles, Helen Shuckman. Eli tämä ihmeiden oppikurssin vastaanottaja Helen Shuckman. Was with Jesus and they seem to be flying. Uh, flying around at a very high uh, rate of speed, it's flying in the mind. And she happened to glance down and she saw the, 
her entire life, the life of Helen Schuckman, was just this tiny little blip. Ja kun hän katsoi alas, hän huomasi, että hänen koko elämänsä, että Helen Schuckmanin elämä oli hyvin pieni, pieni piste. She almost flew by it, and she said, I almost didn't notice it. So it's a vast perspective, a vast way of, of seeing the whole world. But we approach that by being willing to listen and follow what is given us. Ole, ole valmiina uh, kuuntelemaan ja seuraamaan sitä, mitä meillä on annettu. Just one moment at a time. Yksi hetki kerrallaan. So, you, it's easy. The ego always looks back and judges situations. Ego aina katsoo taaksepäin ja tuomitsee. It always has hypotheticals, like if I only I had ja, remembered the luggage. Ja ego on aina näitä omia tuomioita ja hypoteeseja, että jos olisin muistanut ne matkatavarat. And it does that with everything, with relationships, with uh, jobs. It's always if only, if only. Yeah, siis ego aina on se, että kumpa silloin olisin sitä tai tätä tai tuota riippuvatta, että onko ihmissuhteet tai työpaikat tai mikä tahansa asiat kyseessä. But the addiction is the hypothetical thinking. Mutta se addiktio siinä onkin se hypoteesien teko. Thinking that there are so many possibilities. Ajattelen, että mahdollisuuksia on niin paljon. When there's really only one. Kun todellisuudessa niitä on vain yksi. Coming down to our knees. Kun tulemme omille polvillemme. And, and being shown there is just one way back to the truth. Ne näyttää, että on vain yksi tie takaisin totuuteen. But it has to come to us in a way that's meaningful. Mutta sen pitää tulla meille sillä tavalla, mikä on meille mielekäs. We have to see that heaven is a decision. Me, siis he, taivas on päätös. And we have to devote our mind to making that decision. In reality, heaven is not a decision. But for a mind that's sleeping, sleeping and dreaming of separation, heaven has to take the form of a correction. Sin is only an error to be corrected. It has no permanent consequences. Because it wasn't created by God. So we're just opening to follow the guidance and receive the correction. And as you practice, you become more light-hearted with all of this. Ja kun harjoittelet, niin suhtautuu kaikkeen tähän kevyemmin. You're not hard on yourself. You can observe the thoughts go by. Ei ole itselleen julma ja voi tarkkailla, kun ajatukset menevät mielen läpi. Like with the angel bath. Kuten tämä enkeli pyytyy. Just observe. Hmm, I was still measuring and, and analyzing. Hmm, interesting. Ja kuten tämä enkeli pyytyy. Tämä on yhä mittailija ja analysoin siinä. Hmm, mielenkiintoista. That's like a learning experience. Silloin on oppimiskokemus. But you're, you're, you're learning your innocence. You're coming back into that, that pure state of mind. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. You're sharing your steps. <laughs> And nobody thinks you're stupid. <laughs> Pidetäänkö pissotauko? Uh, can we have a small break to go? Sure, sure. Very, that's practical, I like that. Käännetään lähinnä neuvoa. Jatkan sitten. And then she will continue. Okay, very good. Very good, we'll return.
Maybe the other one. That's good. It's like something more diverse than like I want to encourage it. Help them to know. Is there anything to do? And then you said just simply watch it. It's enough. It's really one question. Because it seems like my communication like makes it more. I think it's, it's just good not to hold back. Anything, not to, it's like popping in the bubble between what seems to be a, a private or a concealed thing or a public thing. It really, you know, it's like that's just a bubble, a thin film that you just want to be so transparent that there's no difference there. In that sense, there's no trying to keep, and people always say, well, I'm feeling very emotional, but I've got to keep it together. And I would say, keep what together? What are you, what are you keeping together? And it was taking a look at that. What am I, what is it there to keep together? Or what is there to maintain? But, nothing there. but you're going into the experience of saying to Christ, show me, show me that. Take me there and show I can come. Yeah. Let's get up and move, move a little bit here. I would, would prefer. She, he just said that if somebody wants to have uh, these recordings that he made, a copy of them, uh, then because uh, he has. Uh, recorded them in a way that he has the dates and the time marked. So he would need to know the dates uh, and the like morning session, the Wednesday for example, mm -hmm. if you want to have a copy of it then he can send the copy of the recording if anybody wants. Okay, hey, beautiful, that's good. And I'm putting mine up on Spreaker too, so I, I usually put it by topic, like if we have a topic going on talking about community, Eli hän on myös jakanut Spreaker, missä niin sillä lailla, että siinä on aina se aihe sitten, että mistä puhutaan esimerkiksi tämä yhteisö, tulee olla yksi aihe ja niin poispäin, niin se sen mukaan järjestetään. It's great, thank you for recording, because it it helps to hear these these recordings. Kiitos kun nauhoitat, koska siitä on paljon apua, että voi kuunnella näitä ehkä saksalainen nauhoituksia järjestetään. At some point I would like to say something. Okay. <laughs> Very good. And then after you say what you're going to say, we will start. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Very good. You've been very patient. And the patience is exactly what I came here to get. <laughs> Tämä työ ihan oikeasti joskus tuottaa tuloksia. And also faith and trust that this work that I've been doing sometimes supers fruit. Eli nyt mä oon siinä tilanteessa, niin kuin eilen kerroin, että mies on muuttanut pois kotoa. Now I have the situation, like I told yesterday, that my husband has moved out. Me ollaan hyvissä väleissä. Uh, we are still in good uh, contact. Ja meillä on, pystytään hoitamaan lapset ja ei ole mitään dramatiikkaa and tässä. And we can take care of our children and there's no drama in that sense. Mutta mä tunnen olevani todella yksin. But I feel that I'm really alone. Ja tiedän, että se on egoa. And I know that it's so ego. Koska eihän me koskaan todella olla yksin. Because in reality we really are never alone. Mutta mä en ole ikinä itkenyt niin paljon kuin tänä kesänä. But I never cried so much as I have during this summer. Ja ajattelen, että mä oon harjoittanut anteeksi antoa ihmeiden oppikursseja jo kuusi vuotta. And that I've been practicing forgiveness and cause miracles already for six years. Ja myöskin tätä tilannetta käytän koko ajan anteeksi antoon. And also I'm using this situation constantly for forgiveness. Mulla on lisäksi 
14-vuotias tytär, joka vihaa mua. I have also a 14-year-old daughter who hates me. <laughs> ja ilmaisee koko ajan sen myös, miten epäonnistunut äiti minä olen. And it's very good at expressing how bad mother I am. <laughs> ja siinä on toinen anteeksiannon kohde koko ajan. And there's another forgiveness lesson for me. Mutta... Nyt on juuri sitten valmistui seksuaaliterapeutiksi kesäkuussa. Uh, I just graduated as a sexual therapist uh, in uh, June. Ja ajattelee, että seksuaalisuus on suuri petos. And uh, thinking that sexuality is a great deceit. Eli nyt on, ole elämäntilanteessa, jossa tavallaan mikään maallinen ei enää anna mitään. And now I'm in a situation where nothing earthly gives me uh, nothing. Ja koko ajan pyydän, että tuntisin. Jumalan rakkauden, että muistaisin. Uh, and all the time I'm just asking that I would remember God's love, that I would remember. Mutta mitä ei tunnu tapahtuvan. But nothing seems to happen. Eli nyt tarvitsen rohkaisua ja vahvistusta. And now I need encouragement a little bit help. Well, the good thing that Jesus promises in the course of miracles. Eli hyvä asia mitä Jeesus lupaa ihmeen alkukoksissa. Is that you you will not go on feeling this feeling of being alone. Että tämä ei tule jatkumaan tämä yksinäisyyden tunteminen. We are in contact with so many people all over the world. Meillä on yhteys niin monen ihmisen ympäri maailmaa. That realize that they have a calling or a purpose that that transcends this world. Ja heillä on uh, kutsumus tai tarkoitus, joka murtaa tämän maailman rajaksi. And a, a first step is verbalizing this like you've just done. Ja ensimmäinen askel on puhua siitä tällainen sanoilla ulos niin kuin juuri kerrot. Also now with the internet and there's so many uh, symbols available uh, through the internet. Ja nyt internetin avulla on niin paljon näitä eri symboleja saatavilla. That uh, it can be part of an acceleration of the awakening process. Even if you look back on the, the previous decades, even with a topic such as dating, dating, you can see that now that Communications and the internet has become involved in dating. It has revolutionized the whole topic. Uh, because uh, people are finding all types of ways to connect in deeper ways. The internet was invented uh, for military purposes. Uh, internet kehitettiin sotilaallisia tarkoitusperia varten. And uh, now the Holy Spirit is and Jesus are taking it back for uh, purposes of love and forgiveness. Ja nyt Jeesus ja Pyhä Henki ovat ottaneet sen takaisin rakkauden ja anteeksiannon käyttötarkoituksiin. The ego is trying to hijack it back to use it for distractions and isolation. Ego yrittää kaapata sen takaisin käyttääkseen sitä häiriöihin ja erilaisia kokemuksen. So, what is it for? The purpose is is again central. Ja kysymys on siitä, että mitä varten se on, niin se kysymys on hyvin keskeinen. But as you take these steps on this healing journey, ja kun otat näitä askelia tällä parantumisen matkalla. The witnesses to your desire for awakening will just start to flood into your awareness. Eli ne todistajat, jotka todistavat sinun heräämisesi puolesta, alkavat vaan tulla sinun tietoisuuteesi. So, I feel like that's a very practical way uh, that, that you will transcend this feeling of loneliness. Ja tämä on hyvin käytännöllinen tapa, että tulet muuttamaan tämän uh, yksinäisyyden tunteen. Even all the tears that you've you've said this summer have been part of like a cleansing and a, a rinsing. And uh, your training in sexual therapy it can be used by the Spirit very much as well. Mm-hmm. 
as you come together with clients and just pray and say, use me in the most helpful way. And as you help people re release their limits and their constrictions, you feel your mind easing as well. Now your 14-year-old daughter is providing a huge gift. Uh, I always tell the story when I went to South America. And got away from the big cities like Buenos Aires out into the country. And a, a group of mothers came around me. And they said, our children, oh, our teach, the children are our teachers, they're teaching us so much. I, could, could, I said, can you summarize this, what is the main teaching? And they said, the main teaching is, you're done. Uh, this game of superior and inferior is over now. Just because your body is bigger or you were born before me has nothing to do with our equality. The role of mother and daughter and mother and son is over. Se roolileikki äiti tytär äiti poika välillä niin se on ohi. And you're done. Ja se on tarvon valmis. Give up. Luovuta. Uh, and so uh, this is is like a primary lesson. Tämä on niinku ihan alkupantainen peruslaksen. Because uh, your ultimate destiny is goes beyond motherhood. Koska sinun uh, kohtalosi lopulta niin se on jotain Just as your daughter's destiny goes beyond being a daughter. And the sooner we are able to transcend these roles and concepts, the faster we will be free of guilt and, and struggling in conflict. Teenagers can often be the, the fast track to undoing the authority problem. <laughs> Way down deep in the mind and far down in the subconscious <laughs> is the belief that I can create myself. Any way that I want to be. It could be male, female, young, old. Swedish, Finnish, American. That is my menu to pick from and I can make myself any way I want to be. And this is a, a great pain. Because it denies my spiritual reality as God created me. So she is there in awareness as part of a very strong wake up call. It's like accelerated forgiveness. Uh, when somebody is verbalizing that you're bad or you're terrible, you've done wrong. Uh, you really have to go inside and, and say, do I relate to these things at all? Because if we have any fear or irritation, annoyance in our mind, It will just get acted out and sometimes right in our face. Yeah. Of course animals are very good for this as well. They're just amazing mirrors. So uh, the most important thing is the feeling of connection, collaboration. 
Ja tärkein on se yhteyden ja yhteistyön kon yhteys. Yeah, I think there may be some others who want to even speak of, of all the opportunities there are to to join in and connect in. Eli siis joku munkin saattaa olla saada kertoa, että mitä mahdollisuuksia on liittyä yhteen ja saa kokea tätä. Mm. Because our, our heart was really to have an experience and then to share and extend this experience to everyone and everything. Koska sydämessä on se, että on nimenomaan jakaa ja laajentaa tätä kokemusta kaikille. <laughs> I just feel like I, uh, yeah, I want you. Like there's something right there. And I want to like burst and extend and stay with me. The only thing that comes to my mind. <laughs> it sounds really stupid. How can something that I feel has been so helpful? <laughs> I'm just so ashamed for some reason. It's almost like I don't know how to live anymore. Something I thought was so helpful, so wrong. Not that anything that's ever helpful is wrong. It's just that 
Yeah, it's just that at some point the, the whole ladder starts to fall away. And we, we lose our reference point to the past. And something inside of us just has faith and trust to just let it fall. To just completely crack open and fall away. And this is how it goes with Course in Miracles. That it's just signposts and it's just pointing. As we give ourselves permission to just let everything go. And when we turn back to look to the past for our solutions, even our, our picture of how our life has gone, it, it all just starts to fade away and fall through our fingers. But this is important because you're not hiding or holding anything. <laughs> to just relax and be transparent. It's not that you, it's not that you don't know how to live. It's just you don't know how to live from a past reference point. And everyone knows there's lots of darkness that gets exposed. But the forgiveness is this bright light which just says, just come to me, look past. Past everything. <laughs> Even in your marriage with Kirsten, you would reach points where you couldn't see the solution to the conflict. Like all of the, your best uh, past learning couldn't solve the riddle. And then it keeps happening in our perception, the form of our relationships keeps shifting. And the prayer of our heart is just, Jesus, show me the way. Make this known to me. Why, why do I keep receiving people as asking me if they're right or they're wrong? Like I, I've been informed. I feel so, like I feel so bad if I don't tell them. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's, I think it's the undoing of of this idea, even in the end we have to let go of trying to help people. And be helped our, in our soul, in our mind. Because even trying to help people will have subtle expectations tied into it. Can I just be quiet? Like, right? Can I just say nothing? Yeah, it, Bill Thetford, that was his <laughs> pathway <laughs> to <laughs> enlightenment. <laughs> yeah, that, that you are worthy of that. You are worthy of of being the observer. It's like a way of of. Transcending all the roles before, that came before. That the presence of love in your heart is the gift. 
Rakkauden läsnäolo sydämessä on se lahja. Whether there is words spoken or not. Oli sitten sanoja, tuliko sanotuksi tai ei. Scientists know that everyone around you, there is such love and appreciation for you. Mutta sen tiedän, että tässä kaikki tässä ympärässä niin suuri määrä rakkautta ja arvostusta sinua kohtaan on olemassa. And you just have to receive that and allow that. Ja sinun täytyy vaan ottaa se vastaan ja rakastaa. It's washing away this old belief that I'm only worthy if I do something to deserve it. Se on tavallaan pyykkiä pois se uskomus, että olet ainoastaan sen arvoinen, jos teet jotakin. That somehow my worth depends on being competent or skillful in some way. Että jotenkin arvoni olisi riippuvainen jotenkin omasta pätevyydestäni tai taidoistani tai jostain tämmöisistä asioista. And these are the relationships that the ego has built in this world. I'll do this for you if you'll do this for me. I'll stay with you as long as you keep doing this for me. But if you don't do what I want, then I'll find somebody else and you can leave. These are like little ego bargains and contracts. And then somebody breaks the bargain, then that's the end of the bargain. But this has nothing to do with love. Love asks for nothing. It just wants to give of itself. So this is a beautiful time of self-discovery. Where you step back from the roles. <coughs> and trying to uphold any kind of image. And even with mind training you just focus on what am I feeling right now? What am I feeling? Keskittyy siihen, että mitä minä tunnen juuri nyt. Mitä minä tunnen. That's your one barometer. Se on se yksi mittari. Just being honest with how do I feel right now. On olla täysin rehellinen, että mitä minä tunnen juuri nyt. Regardless of appearances. Ihan riippumatta siitä, mitä ulkoisesti näyttää tapahtuvan. Appearances cannot make me feel anything. Ne eivät saa minua tuntemaan mitään. It's all going on inside. Kaikki tapahtuu sisällä. So it's beautiful. This is the authentic inner journey. And just as we were sharing, you'll be loved and supported for whatever you seem to need. Yeah. That's okay. I have a he doesn't want to help anyone anymore. And I didn't have a lot of But my wife gets angry if I don't say anything sometimes. <laughs> That's part of the lesson. <laughs> Can I, <laughs> I actually I have a, this example. <laughs> David, he, he talked about our animals. Uh, David, who we made then we gave them. Because I got a dog not too long ago, a second dog. <laughs> She's called Svea. <laughs> She's three years old when she came to me. <laughs> and she bit, she was biting. <laughs> 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 and the funny thing is that I had felt her ever since last year. <laughs> yeah, I have felt her. Yeah. She was announced in an ad that she needed a new family. And it wasn't until just recently that I received her. Hundreds of people wanted to have her. <laughs> but they said that they wanted me to have her. <laughs> and she came at the perfect timing. <laughs> Just one week before a Holland tour. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded crazy. <laughs> but it was the perfect timing. <laughs> I was joining with Nicolene. <laughs> And she could see Svea biting. Yeah, and 
and bring it back to her own mind. Ja toi sen takaisin hänen mielensä. Where she was biting. Missä hän tuli. And then um, a little bit later, uh, well, we left her at the kennel. Ja jätimme hänet sitten kenneliin vähän myöhemmin. Where she got to be with many more dogs, and she doesn't like dogs. Ja se on saa muun koiran kanssa, hän ei pidä koirista, mutta koirista. So she got to heal that as well there. Ja then she got to heal that. Ja me parantamme myös sen siellä. And she got back with Angel and and her back to us again. Ja hän tuli sitten Angelin kanssa, Angelin kanssa. Ja yes, se toinen koira. Toinen koira nimi. Niin Yhdellä toinen pisi näitä Angel. Angel, yes. Yes, eli siis sen toisen koiran Angel koiran kanssa. <laughs> 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 yes. So both Svi and Angel, they were completely different when they came back. Ja molemmat näistä koirista ovat täysin erilaisia, kun he tulivat takaisin. And it took the forgiveness of Nicolene before the tour, when she almost stopped biting before we went on the yeah, tour. Se, Nicolene, and then in the collaboration of meeting Sia, just as she had opened up her heart. And then continue joining with her, <coughs> continue opening up her heart together. Yeah, and then Sandy, she came. Ja sitten Sandy tuli. And Sandy, she started petting both of the dogs without wanting to pet them. Ja sitten Sandy alkoi siittää molempia niitä koiria ilman, että halusi oikeastaan. She got angry with the dogs. Ja suuttui koirille. <laughs> because she was compromising. Koska hän teki kompromissin. So she was doing an action that she didn't feel from the heart. Ja hän teki jotain, mitä hän ei sydämestään tuntenut, että halusi tehdä. So she said, I want to stop that. Ja hän sanoi, että haluan lopettaa tekemästä. And I said, yeah, why aren't you? Joo, sitten kysyin, että miksi te lopetaan? Why are you petting the dogs? Miksi sitten niitä koiria silitään? And she's like, yeah, why am I? Kysyin, että miksi itseltään. So she stopped. Ja hän lopetti. And that's when she could open up her heart to Svea. Ja silloin hän pystyi olemaan sydämessä Svea. First, so one morning I was watching them. Ja yksi aamu katsoin niitä. I was like, wow. And she's like, yeah, I forgave Svea. And they were this love bubble together. And then she felt that Angel was too needy. That she would go, just if we would be just some meters away. And she's like, oh, Angel is so needy. And then she would go, oh, my own neediness. I need to look at that. So she brought that back to her mind. And then she just felt all this love for Angel. So she allowed herself in every step of the way of just whatever she was feeling and not compromising. Tunteet ja eikä tehnyt kompromisseja siinä ja antaisi koko. Yeah, just what you were talking about now. Ja tämä on siitä, mitä puhuin äsken. Yeah. yeah, we're learning, we don't have to compromise in this journey. Mm. Mm. Meidän ei tarvitse tehdä mitään kompromisseja. So we get, we remember you. Yeah, we remember you. I realized uh, when it was just starting that I felt that how can I escape? I was the first one to pass. Se meni kauhean nopea ja mä kuulin kauhean nopea siitä ja, ja tota, 
I realized that it went very very quickly and I passed very quickly. It's it's uh, kind of when that I really didn't have time to feel it. I could relax. And you could not relax. You could not relax. Yeah. So in goal sama mun elämässä. It's been the same in my life. That it is very difficult for me to receive love. Ja yleensä silloin kun mä oon kokenut, että se rakkaus tulee mun lähelle, niin mä lähden pakoon tämän työnä sen pois. And usually when I feel that the love is coming close to me, I push it away or I run. Se oli vaan sellainen huomio tästä. It was just an observation. Että miten se mun niin kuin, kokemus heijastui tähänkin. How my experience is, is mirrored or reflected in this situation as well. It can be the same, same emotion. Oh, I don't know, I just wanted to share this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Sitten toinen asia on se, että mä huomaan, että kun mä tein sitä käännöstä. And another thing I realized that when I was doing the translation. Niin mä en, mua pelottaa kuunnella niitä. I'm afraid of listening to those. Vaikka mä kuuntelen just Seth Spreakerista monesti David juttuja. Although I listen from Spreaker, I listen many of your, your stories there and your things. Niin mä ajattelin, että mä en uskalla kuunnella niitä mun omia. Ja I thought that I do don't dare to listen to my own translations. Koska mä pelkään, että mä oon jotenkin tehnyt jonkun virheen tai... So I'm afraid that I'm doing some mistake or something. Ja sit mä huomaan myös, että mä vertailen itteni tähän toiseen käänteen. And I realize that I'm making comparisons with the other guy. Ja mä haluan se vaan rakkaan ja vaan rakkaan, koska musta tuntuu, että mä haluan tehdä kompromissin tästä, että mä en kerro siitä. Um, so I wanted to open up yourself, I thought that I would do a compromise if I'm not for sharing this. Mm. Ah, beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Hey. Ah. <laughs> That's it. Mm. Courageously stepping forward like mm. that. That's... Rohkeasti That's it. Mm. That's it. Minä haluan erittäin aina korostaa sitä, että kuinka onnellinen vaan, kun meillä on nämä hyvät nämä käänteet. Ja niitä on useita mm. kääntejä, jotka todella hienosti tuo asiaa mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to say that I'm very happy that we have good translations here yeah, and they work too. Yes. 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 Okay. yes, thank you. Yes, it's such a joint effort. This is our morning for courage. For dropping the mask. Yeah. Laying everything bare, just out on the table. Yeah. yeah, we find that that's part of, that's a very essential part of healing, is just to be able to talk about things and lay things <coughs> out. And people will say, why is that so important? When you open up and you share what's going on and you're willing to share it. It's just a symbol that you're not going to hide it from the Holy Spirit. Because the only way you hold on to judgments is by hiding them. First you have to believe that judgments are true. Then you feel guilty and ashamed for the thoughts and the beliefs. And the ego said, you can't tolerate that, push that out of awareness. Push it down. Uh, and hide it. It's like that cartoon, The Lion King. Uh, little Simba was present when his father was killed in the herd. And then his uncle Scar appeared and made a judgment, a conclusion, said, you killed your father. Run, run far away. Because you've done this terrible thing. 
So he, he left his family, he left all of his friends. Hän jätti perheensä ja kaikki ystävänsä kaiken. And he goes into the forest to eat bugs. Hän menee metsään syömään ötököitä. And try to be happy with the bugs. Ja koittaa olla onnellinen näiden ötököiden seurassa. He called it Hakuna Matata. Hakuna Matata on ikään kuin sitä. But he still wasn't with his his family and friends. Mutta hän ei silti ollut perheensä ja ystävänsä seurassa. He had to go back and face his shame and guilt. Before he could be truly free. And feel the spirits akuna matata. <laughs> Honestly, no cares, no worries. <laughs> so it's only by hiding these private thoughts that we keep them. Sillä, että pidämme nämä yksityiset ajatukset sillä, kun piilotamme ne. And by exposing them, we're really giving them back to the Holy Spirit. Ja kun tuomme ne julki, niin sillä annamme ne pyhän hengelle. Who takes them immediately and they're gone forever. Ja joka ottaa ne välittömästi ja sitten ovat pois ikuisiksi ajaksi. Mm. So, we don't have to hide anymore. Meidän ei enää tarvitse piilotella. We don't have to run away. Ei tarvitse anymore. juosta karkuun. And it's okay to go back in our own mind. And find the light. We don't have to distract ourselves with all these images. All this stimulation. And noise. Uh, we don't have to be afraid of the quiet. We aren't going to die in the quiet. Ja me tulemme kuolemaan tässä hiljaisuudessa. We're just going to sink in. <laughs> we are we are not going to die. We're not going to die. But that was... It's always... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the collaboration again. Yes, it's beautiful. It's a total collaboration. It's not personal. <laughs> that's right. It's not personal. That's very... That's correct. That's very good. All of my thoughts are personal. That's exactly right. Yes, very good. Very good. <laughs> you guys are a great witness. Yeah. <laughs> okay, how are we doing? I guess, is there more to come? <laughs> <laughs> I just would like to say to Jason that I also feel like that I, I don't know anymore how to live. <laughs> in my life, I haven't known, never, I actually have never known how to live my life. It's been just a struggle. <laughs> trying to figure it out. <laughs> and I haven't been even able to tell myself what to do, right or wrong. <laughs> Can we do something? <laughs> I want to stand in the middle and have everybody just come around. Oh, oh yes. yes. <laughs> around you or what? <laughs> Yesterday was the angel bed. This is called the love puddle. And Jason's a drop in the middle of the love puddle. <laughs>